Yo, what's good everybody? It's Waylon. Back at it again. Y'all already know. Or do you? That's right, exactly. Y'all don't know. So I'm here to tell you about electron degeneracy pressure. You know, in class we talked about the poly exclusion principle. We talked about how electrons are only allowed to occupy certain momentum and energy states and how quantum spins, uh, particularly opposite quantum spins, can allow multiple electrons to uh, reside in one momentum state. So now that we covered that in class, I wanted to talk to y'all about um, how this uh, principle manifests itself in a special case in this universe. Uh, particularly, I'm going to be talking about electron degeneracy pressure in white dwarfs. So I'm going to give you all a quick refresher of what the Pauli exclusion principle states and um, the consequences of that statement. So the statement says, no two electrons in an atom may have the same set of quantum numbers. Um, and from this, you can figure out the exact electron configuration of the atom. And by electron configuration, I'm talking about um, how many electrons are in each orbital, um, how many orbitals there are, uh, the intrinsic spins of each electron, and so on and so forth, uh, which are all defining characteristics of specific elements. And the first consequence of that is that the electrons in an atom tend to occupy the lowest energy levels available to them. And this fact, coupled with the second statement saying that only one electron can be in a given state with a given set of quantum numbers, um, this is implying that uh, two electrons can be in one state if they have separate intrinsic spin values, one being spin up, one being spin down. So the question that arises from these two principles is what happens to atoms, um, particularly the electrons in the atoms, when these atoms are crushed to extreme densities. And what essentially happens at such high densities is that the electron configurations almost lose feature and become somewhat indistinguishable from one another. So when you take your measurement, you end up having multiple quantum measurements of a single energy level rather than a single well-defined energy measurement corresponding to one specific electron configuration. So if you receive multiple quantum measurements of a single energy level, that energy level is said to be degenerate. All right, so now that we reviewed all of that, let's get down to how quantum degeneracy manifests itself in the form of degeneracy pressure. So think back to your typical electrodynamics. You have your negatively charged electrons bounded in orbit around a positive nucleus, right? Now, let's take two atoms and bring the electrons close together. And we see, obviously, that these electrons would repel each other. Now, let's get a bunch of these atoms crush them to densities that are high enough to overcome electron-to-electron -electron repulsion, and what you'll get, based on the Pauli exclusion principle, are multiple but opposite spin electrons occupying each energy level and a complete filling of all the lowest energy levels, which means that these electrons in these levels are now locked in place and cannot move, despite the intrinsic electron-to-electron -electron repulsion. The sun is not nearly dense enough to create these conditions until it has exhausted all of its hydrogen and helium. Once it's done this, the core of the star will begin to contract under the huge weight of the star and will only prevent itself from collapsing further due to the electron degeneracy pressure that is established by the contraction of the core to extreme densities. This outward pressure is caused by the cumulative electron to electron repulsion between all the tightly crammed electrons wanting to push outward away from each other. This electron degeneracy pressure is sufficient enough to maintain hydrostatic equilibrium in a white dwarf. Now, an important fact to remember about white dwarfs are that they are caused by the contraction of the core of a stellar remnant, meaning that if you add mass to a white dwarf, it actually decreases in radius and contracts further. Therefore, there is an upper threshold to a white dwarf's mass called the Chandrasekhar limit, which is roughly 1.4 times the mass of the sun. A white dwarf can tip over this mass by accreting material from a neighboring star, which is, by the way, the subject of my senior project. Shout out Dr. Shafter, you already know. And once it does so, the electron degeneracy pressure becomes insufficient 
causing the white dwarf to collapse completely and bounce back and explode in a type 1a supernova.